One question that many paleontology and nature enthusiasts alike have likely asked at some point is what is the largest mammalian land predator to have existed? This question basically goes hand in hand with answering what was the largest land carnivore since the dinosaurs, as with a few exceptions, mammals have held the top order carnivore niche for the past 66 million years. Some people might say Smilodon or the cave lion or one of the massive felids from the Pleistocene epoch which lived in Eurasia and the Americas. And these were massive animals, but not quite large enough to be the largest. Others may say Andrusarchus, the Mongolian hypercarnivorous wolf-like creature featured in the BBC's Walking with Beasts. Not only has advancing science helped us clear up what this animal looked like, but we also don't have much material to go off in the first place. After all, Andrew Sarkis Mongoliensis is only known from a single skull, and an incomplete skull at that. So size estimates are not exactly the most reliable, especially when it comes to calculating this particular species. In actuality, the largest mammalian land carnivore to have ever existed that we have some reliable remains for was a bear. To be more specific, this bear was a part of the genus Arctotherium, which was a diverse genus of bear that lived across South America and Central America, containing about five species. Now, South America might seem like a strange place to find a bear, but it's not as strange as you may think at first glance. The closest living relative of Arctotherium and the last surviving short-faced bear is the Spectacle Bear, which also lives in northern South America. However, the Arctotherium species I'm about to discuss was much larger than the Spectacle Bear, weighing nearly 10 times as much. The largest of the five species was Arctotherium angustidens, which lived in Argentina and Uruguay, with remains dating to between 2.58 million and 700,000 years ago, from the late Pliocene to the mid Pleistocene. Arctotherium angustidens was first discovered near the capital city of Argentina, Buenos Aires, in 1879, and it was described a year later in 1880. The latest remains of this bear, dated to 700,000 years ago, were found 140 years later in 2019 near San Pedro, Argentina. The individual's remains consisted of a complete skull with all the dentition and cranial anatomy needed to assign it to Arctotherium, more specifically Arctotherium angustidens. This particular individual is believed to have weighed 800 kilograms in life, which would already have it as the largest terrestrial carnivore around today, rivaling even the largest polar bears and Kodiak bears. However, this wouldn't be enough to place it as the largest bear ever, as the giant short-faced bear, Arctodus simus, could reach up to 957 kilograms in life, over 150 kilograms more. Despite this 700,000-year-old skull not quite reaching the largest land carnivore status, it was really close overall, and it wasn't actually the largest individual of Arctotherium. The largest specimen of Arctotherium angustidens ever discovered was found near Argentina's capital, and it was known from several leg bones including the humerus. This is a very fragmentary individual, but it's definitely larger than the previously mentioned San Pedro specimen. The description of this individual, which was published in 2011, provided a size range of 983 to 2,042 kilograms, with a more probable range of 1,588 to 1,749 kilograms. Even with the more conservative range, this bear was larger than the average male hippopotamus. 
and nearly 500 kilograms heavier than the average black rhinoceros. The height of such a massive individual has been estimated at a massive 6 feet or 1.8 metres at the shoulder. So even on all fours, this beast would be at the eye level of a fully grown man. So taller than many of you watching this video. When on just two legs, this bear is estimated to have reached 14 feet or 4.3 metres to the top of the head, which dwarfs even the African bush elephant in height, which, if it was alive today, would make it the second tallest living land mammal, only behind the giraffe. Such a massive individual would make this bear a mega carnivore, a term which I just coined right then. If you saw my video on mega herbivores, which is my latest upload before this one, then you would know that this term, mega herbivores, includes land mammals that are herbivorous and weigh well over 1,000 kilograms on average. Depending on who you ask, there are anywhere from 8 to 12 mega herbivore species alive today, compared to a total of zero mega carnivores. Meanwhile, if Arctotherium angustidens was still extant, then it would comfortably weigh well over 1,000 kilograms in at least extreme circumstances. And it's possible that one-ton males were not too uncommon. What is interesting is that carnivores never grow larger than herbivores in terrestrial ecosystems with a few exceptions, and this is because carnivores have a higher metabolic rate compared to herbivores. And as a result, they reach their maximum size threshold long before herbivores do. A good technique to help me discern how large land carnivores can get at any one point in history is to look at the largest herbivores. For example, today, the largest terrestrial carnivore, the polar bear, or at least the one shot in 1960, weighed 1,002 kilograms compared to Henry the Elephant shot in 1954, which weighed 10,886 kilograms, a difference of more than tenfold. This same technique of dividing the mass of the largest herbivore around by 10 also roughly works with Arctotherium angustidens. As certain species of Paleoloxodon, like Paleoloxodon antiquus and Paleoloxodon recchi, grew to be up to a maximum of 15 tonnes. So again, about 10 times larger than Arctotherium. Though keep in mind this could be a bit skewed as the fossil record is very skewed overall. As I've mentioned several times already, Arctotherium angustidens was the first species of Arctotherium to live and go extinct, dying out around 700,000 years ago. This bear lived in open, cooler grassland habitats near the Andean mountain range and would have lived alongside a wide range of other unique animals. Among the animals that would have been potentially encountered by this bear were the wild camelids, guanacos and vicuñas, which are the wild ancestors of llamas and alpacas. Both guanacos and vicuñas were indeed around 700,000 years ago in central Argentina and could have served as possible prey items for Arctotherium, especially if it was a more carnivorous bear, like the polar bear. Another modern animal that may have lived alongside Arctotherium angustidens was the Mara, which is a large, ungulate-like species of rodent, of which there are two species, both of which live in the same area as where Arctotherium angustidens has been found. These rodents are incredibly fast for their size, reaching up to 36 kilometres per hour. However, this might not have been enough to outrun Arctotherium, which has an estimated top speed of around 25 miles or 40 kilometers per hour. To conclude this episode, Arctotherium angustidens was a magnificent animal and one that the world will never see the likes of again.